Welcome to this lunchtime Eucharist at St. Stephen's Walbrook. My name is Peter Babington. I'm the priest in charge of St. Mary La Strand Church, and it's a real pleasure to be with you uh, as we share together in this Eucharist. A particular welcome to you if you're uh, worshipping here for the first time. Please do stay after the service for some refreshments if you are able. Our music today is performed by uh, Freya and John, and the service begins on page one of your Order of Service booklet. So let us place ourselves in the presence of God as we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. He sits, we listen to our first reading from Scripture. The reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 28. The Supremacy of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the, ch of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. Provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, 
the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. We stand as we hear the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 38th verse. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus and his disciples entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I be helped to speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I love that little story from uh, the Gospel of Martha and Mary of Bethany offering uh, the hospitality of their home to Jesus and his disciples. There's a few things that are worth just noticing about this reading. Um, Martha it says, is distracted by her many tasks. And we always assume that she's uh, just busy serving in the kitchen. And we might, there might be an implication that that's not um, a good thing. So the first thing to say is actually, she was offering hospitality, which is a vital thing to do and especially in this culture so she's doing something very important so let us not think that what Martha's doing is not important but another thing just to point out is that the Greek text of the New Testament um, before the translation the word that is this is uh, that we translate as tasks is the word diakonia uh, which It's often translated ministry. Uh, Diakonia is what a deacon does. It can mean uh, serving at tables, uh, but really it means having a particular task or a commissioned task. So if I had read this by saying Martha was distracted by by much ministry, you might have thought, well, she's not just busy in the kitchen, is she? She's doing something. Well, firstly... Hospitality is a ministry. But secondly, don't, let, let's not diminish what Martha's doing. Let's turn to Mary. She is sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his teaching. What she is doing there is she has placed herself in the position of a disciple. When a rabbi would teach... The rabbi's disciples would sit at his feet and listen. Mary has put herself in the position of a disciple. So again, let's just remember that when we talk about Jesus and the 12 disciples, that does give us a view of uh, Jesus and these 12 men who were going around learning from with him. But actually there was a much wider circle. We know from the rest of the Gospels that there was a whole group of other people who traveled with him, other men and other women who supported him, journeyed with him, listened to him, 
shared in his mission. Nevertheless, when Martha complains to Jesus that Mary's not doing her bit uh, with the hospitality, he says, Martha, you are distracted by many things. You're, you're, you've become distracted by what you're doing. Mary's chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. So Jesus affirms Mary's discipleship. I once heard a wonderful sermon uh, on this passage from um, a priest from the Philippines who was called Ed de la Torre. Ed de la Torre was a rail, very, very much a, a social activist. He, was, he worked with some of the poorest of the poor in the Philippines and was a great uh, campaigner for liberation under the Marcos regime. So very much a social activist. And I heard him preach on this passage and he said, uh, this thing that stayed with me uh, over 30 years. He said, we all have these two sisters struggling inside of us. And we have to learn to stand in solidarity with both of them. We all have these two sisters inside us. And we have to learn to stand in solidarity with both of them. What does that mean? Well, we all have things to do. We all have our particular tasks, whether they're called ministry or work, or just what we like to do, or how we play our part in our communities and in our homes. So we can't just say, None of us should be doing tasks. We, there's a better path. <laughs> Jesus said we should be listening to his teaching. No, we all have jobs to do and tasks to do. The important thing is not to be distracted by those, but to be able to do the tasks that have been given to us in a way in which we are fully present, where we're doing them intentionally, where we're doing them wholeheartedly, And we need to learn to stand in solidarity with Mary of Bethany. We need to have times when we're not busy and distracted by our many tasks, where we can be present to what's going on around us, to the beauty of the world, to the people um, whom we love, to the places where we live, to the wonder of creation. And if we don't spend time resting, contemplating, listening, learning, then the chances are our doing, our acting will not be um, grounded or rooted or uh, done. We won't, probably won't be doing the right things and we're more likely to be distracted. So let us uh, learn to stand in solidarity with these two sisters, Martha and Mary. May we be blessed in the things we do and may what we do be a blessing to others. And may we be nourished and sustained by Christ who is the living word, who comes to us uh, in simplicity and trust and who we uh, are called to welcome into our hearts and as you come forward uh, to receive communion or a blessing today uh, try to be open to receive the gift that God wishes to give you that you may be nourished as you go from here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
during the singing of the Offertory Hymn, a collection will be taken for the work of the church. And we stand now to sing hymn number 424, 424, O Love Divine, How Sweet Thou Art. Gracious God, I accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, may your church gather at your feet, united in worship and service. We pray for our clergy, for Peter, for Stephen, for all who serve in your name and especially this week for those preparing to gather at the Lambeth Conference. Let us not be distracted or worried about our differences, but learn to cherish diverse expressions of ministry. Surrounded by voices in desperate need, help us to hear your word and be guided by your spirit so that we might discern your will, which is the better part. Lord, in thy mercy, Living God, may the people of this divided world be reconciled by walking together in the footsteps of your Son. We pray for all with authority and influence that they may hear your still small voice of calm and work for truth, justice, and peace. Liberate us from destructive patterns of behavior which are causing such harm to your creation. Lead us to a better path. Lord, in thy mercy, Generous God, may this city be a place of hospitality to all who journey through it. 
We pray for students, teachers, and all about to embark on summer holidays. Help us to set aside time and space for reflection in our daily lives, to be fully present to the great joy that is life in Christ. Bring hope to those who feel unfulfilled in their work. Strengthen all who feel stretched and at the end of their tether. Grant us the grace to help lighten their load. May all we do be a blessing to others. Lord, in thy mercy. Loving God, may all who are sick and suffering find wholeness in your presence. We pray for those affected by extreme weather conditions and for the emergency services and all those who put their lives at risk in service of others. We remember by name those for whom our prayers have been asked, including Stephen, Melvin, Margaret, John, Alexander and his family, Caroline, Francine, Carol, Peter, and for Juliet and her family, Adrian, Jennifer and their family, Martin, Sam and Sophia, for Sally, Tom, Sarah, Kim and Mark, Jonathan, Anthony, Sue and their family. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those names written on our own hearts of those who are in particular need at this time. Lord, in thy mercy. Eternal God, may those whose work on earth is complete find rest in your heavenly home. We pray for the faithful departed and ask for your blessing on all who mourn. In the company of St. Stephen and all the saints, we pray, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Service continues on page 8 of the booklet. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we ever, ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all that them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour, and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. A 
Now, as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. All those who love God are invited to receive Holy Communion. If that is not your custom, please make your way to the altar and bow your head for a blessing. Communion will be administered in both kinds, the body and blood of Christ. Um, if for reasons of hygiene you prefer just to receive uh, the body of Christ, that is fine. You can receive in one kind and that is still full communion. If you do wish to receive the chalice, uh, the present practice that's being recommended uh, for the Church of England is that you uh, drink from the cup. Please do not intinct or dip the wafer because there's a risk of you putting your fingers in the wine which then other people uh, have to drink from. So either receive in one kind the body of Christ or both kinds, uh, but if you're receiving the chalice, please do drink from the chalice. Draw near with faith.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service today, and thank you to Roger, no, thank, you, thank you to Philip for the intercessions, and uh, thank you uh, Freya and John for the beautiful music. Uh, please do take away the service sheets with you, uh, which contain dates for the week ahead. Our organ recital series continues tomorrow at 12.30. And please do join us after this service if you're able for a light lunch. Now can I invite you please to stand as we pray for God's blessing on us all. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.